Are you tired of wrestling with your GUI, desperately trying to scale it perfectly so it fits onto your player's screens, only to find yourself on the edge of smashing your computer? I've been there and let me tell you, the struggle is real, but thankfully I've got a solution which I'll show you in today's video. So in today's video we will be going over GUI scaling, as you've probably already noticed from the intro. What GUI scaling does is it automatically scales the in-game GUI to fit every single player's screen accordingly. If they're playing on a laptop or a phone, it will no matter what display correctly. This is needed in pretty much every single Roblox game to make it playable for every single Roblox user, no matter what device they're playing on. In today's video, I'll be doing multiple demonstrations showing you how to scale any type of GUI correctly. We will cover how to scale simple GUI buttons which are on the side of your screen to big frames such as Game Pass Shops, Teleporter GUI or Item Shops. But that's not all. We will also be going over how to scale scrolling frames correctly, as scaling a normal frame is different compared to a scrolling frame. Well, I think that's enough yapping from me. Without further ado, let's begin. So for starters, we want to be starting on the main creator hub inside of Roblox. Now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be installing a plugin. Now, to scale GUI correctly, we will have to install a plugin and we will be using plugins simply because there is no in-game feature or in-game Roblox Studio feature to actually correctly scale GUI. So we're installing a plugin because this is the plugin that you're going to need to scale your GUI correctly. So now your screen will probably look slightly different to mine. Your one will probably say install or maybe something like try and studio just like mine does. If it says try and studio, you've got it installed. If, you if it doesn't say that and it still says install, you want to go and install this plugin and this will now be added onto your Roblox Studio plugins. So you want to go and install that and then you want to head back to Roblox Studio. So we're in our main base plate and we first of all now want to enable our plugin. Now, usually all plugins will load up into your plugins tab, but depending on how many plugins you have will vary. Now, what you want to do, if your plugin is not obviously shown up here where mine is, the auto scale light is shown up here. There again, there is also another plugin you can purchase for 100 Robux. This is, I think it's called like a the one up from the auto scale light. I don't know what it's called completely, but I do know it costs Robux. If you want to get that one, you can, but this auto scale light, the complete free one, it doesn't cost anything. It's completely free and it works amazingly. So I, there is no really reason to purchase the more expensive one. Anyway, if your auto scale light is not showing up here in the plugins, either go and close studio and then rejoin or you want to head over to your manage uh, plugins here and then this is where you can manage your plugins that you have enabled. So this is, these are where all your plugins are displayed and you can see I've got quite a large amount of plugins and you can see which ones are, I've got enabled. I've got the, uh, you can see them by being enabled where they have like a green little slidey thing. You can see all of these that I have currently have enabled. Now, when you have your, when you've installed a plugin correctly and you've gone through the process, it's going to show up here. And usually on default, it's going to load up here. But if not, you want to go to your manage plugins and then you want to you enable auto scale light just like that. So you can see I just disabled mine, auto scale light has disappeared. But now if I go add it back again, you're able to see now it is over here. It used to be over there, but now it is over here. And now we have enabled our auto scale light. This is going to be the plugin that we're going to be using to create our GUI and scale it correctly. What we're going to be starting off with is we're going to be heading over to our starter GUI. I'm going to click on the plus button and insert a screen GUI. And now this is going to create a screen GUI. Click on the plus button and we're going to just be starting with a text button. You can go and insert the side of a frame. It's completely up to you. I'm going to be going over a number of demonstrations here just to show you how it all works correctly. Anyway, so we've got our main button here. This is what a majority of, I guess you could say, beginner UI designers would do is just insert a button inside of your screen GUI. If you're wanting your GUI to be a bit more, I guess you could say, organized, then you would use multiple frames instead of having a bazillion screen GUIs here with different types of buttons. For example, let's say you want another button up here. Someone would maybe go and duplicate that, but that's not what we want to be doing. So we're just going to be focusing on this main text button here right now. And this, for example, will be a Game Pass button, okay? So what you want to do now, as we can see, we've got our Game Pass button here. We can go scale it up. We can really do whatever we want. I'm just going to leave my button just like that. Now, if we have to go join into the game just like this, we've got our script and then whatnot. We join into the game. It is not going to be center. And now to be able to test if what your um, GUI looks like on a device, you head over here to your test bar and you click on device. And now you can see 
the different uh, perspectives of what your GUI will look in, uh, look like in someone's game. So you can see on a Galaxy or S7 or whatever this is, the GUI takes up pretty much nearly half of the screen. Where on our device, it's actually right here, not taking up half the screen. It's maybe taking up a, maybe a fifth of the screen here on the left. It's not covering up the entire screen. Same thing if we go and change this to maybe an iPhone 14 Pro, you can see it's also taken up maybe around about a third of the screen and it is simply just not scaled how we like it. And what can tend to happen is GUIs can sometimes actually go and overlap each other, especially if they're very close. So for example, we, ha we had it here, you have to see on our iPhone 14 Pro now, you can see the two GUIs are overlapping simply because they're not scaled and it is just a bit of a, a, bit of a mess. So what we want to do to fix this is we need to inst uh, do scaling to our GUI. Now I'm going to try to keep this as brief and simple and straightforward as I can. We're going to focus on these, uh, just the one text button here. So we got this text button here. Now what you can do is you can go and adjust the anchor point. Usually when you go and scale GUI, you go and adjust the anchor point simply because that is where your um, uh, GUI is going to be forming into. So you'll, you'll get a better understanding of what I mean here for now. So for example, in this text button, I'm going to go and change the anchor point to 0 0.1, uh, sorry, 0 0.5, comma 0 0.5 here in the properties. Now you see it will take it like a little bit out of screen. You just drag it back. It's not, not the end of the world. But now you can see there's like a random square here in the, se uh, in the center. That is because our anchor point is, is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 in the middle of the GUI. Our anchor point previously was 0, 0, which is right up here in the top corner. So if we change it back to 0, 0.0, you're able to see that the actual square is there just in the middle. It's kind of got a little bit of a dark shade. But now that we change it to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, it's now here in the middle. And if you changed it to one, it would be down here in this corner. But basically what this does is it makes it so that this button doesn't go and move that way when we scale it. It doesn't move that way, but it just moves actually in. It just minimizes itself. And this is the most common um, uh, anchor point that people use. And it really depends where your GUI is scaled or, or is located on the screen. Usually GUI that is located either here on the left or in the middle of the screen is gonna be with the anchor point 0.5. But let's say you had a text label up here, for example, your anchor point would be zero, simply because that is the top part of the screen. Same thing here at the bottom. If your GUI was located here at the bottom and let's say you had some, I don't know, currency displayment here at the bottom, you'd have your anchor point at one because 0 0.5, one. That's basically how the anchor point works there. Anyway, so back to scaling. Now, when it comes to just a simple button like this, it's actually very, very easy. So we want to head over to our plugins that we're working with, obviously go and customize your GUI to how you would like it. It doesn't really matter for us because I mean, who cares what our GUI looks like? So we're going to head over here and now we want to go to our plugins, go to your auto scale light, click on unit conversion. And now this will probably display somewhere over your screen. If you want it to sit something like I just had it there, you just go and grab the top bar there and then you just go and put it accordingly. So I'm going to put it up here just above the Explorer because we don't need much of the Explorer right now. So we've selected our text button. We then go and click scale here on size and scale on position. Do not click offset or that is going to muck it up and it's just going to be one big mess. So the only thing you want to do is click scale here on size and scale on position. Now we've now gone and done the unit conversion. We now want to go click back on our text button, go to our plugins and insert a, add, uh, and add a constraint into the part. Now what this basically does, it adds a UI aspect ratio constraint inside of our text button. So now let's say we had to go and suddenly minimize our screen. You're able to see the GUI scales accordingly. Same thing, you may say, okay, well, hold on. That's just you moving your screen there. That's normal. No, it's not. If we go to our test bar here, click on device, you're able to see our iPhone, uh, iPhone 14 Pro has actually also scaled down and it's not taken up a third of the screen anymore. Same thing, where's that Galaxy thing that we were using earlier? Same thing there. It's now scaled down correctly, which is making it a nice looking GUI button, not taking up the whole entire screen. And exactly what we were saying before regarding the overlapping, let's say we just duplicated this one here. It doesn't matter if you duplicate it, nothing's gonna change. There you go, we've got our two buttons there. We go click on test device. You're able to see now there's a nice solid looking gap. There's a nice space between the two GUIs and they're not overlapping. So it doesn't matter what device you're on, these GUIs are going to be scaled correctly. Now let's say we were wanting a, let's say we were wanting a text label here at the top. This, for example, this could be how much time is remaining in the round, okay? There's our text label, amazing, excellent. Now instead, what, what hold on, let, let me reframe here for a second. 
In the plugins, there is one called Scale Text. Now, when you're working with a text button or a, um, a text label, and I should actually mention that there, you may want your GUI to be scaled, but the easy way to do that is simply go to the properties and enable text scaled instead of having to insert an entire new, um, I guess you could call it a constraint or little um, additive into your GUI. You're just going to click text scaled. So when we go and move this, the te scale is te uh, um, the text is scaled correctly. Instead of it being always tiny, it is now sizing up depending on the size of the GUI. Same thing here. I'm just going to go and click on text scaled so that we don't have to go and add another one of these scale text things inside of our text label. Now we do the exact same thing. So we go here, size and uh, sorry, scale on the size, scale on the position, and then in our si inside of our text label, add constraint. And now you can see when we go and scale down and our anchor point is zero because it is at the top, we haven't had to adjust our anchor point because it is at the top 0.51. We go and move this around here. You have to see it scales correctly. So now that we've centered our text label, let's hit, say we had to go and test out here in the test tab you're able to see that it is scaled all correctly. Same with the text, the text is scaled. Let's say we had an iPhone 4S, and who knows who's walking around with an iPhone 4S nowadays, but we've got an iPhone 4S scaled correctly, iPhone 6, iPhone XR, it's all scaled correctly. Same with the text, you're able to see that button there doesn't have the text scaled enabled where this one does, meaning our text inside of that button is scaled correctly. Same with this one, it is scaled correctly. It's not too small, not too big. It is scaled nicely to fit the size of that GUI. The exact same thing if you were to have, for example, let's say another text label down here at the bottom. You do that, let's just have, let's duplicate this. But the only thing you'd need to go do now is just change the anchor point. So the anchor point would be one comma one. And now you can see it's gonna take it over there, but you just drag it back, easy as that, and you reposition it how you would like. So if we go test it out here in the device, you have to see now our text label is scaled there correctly. But you can kind of see there's a little bit of a misalignment, it seems to be like. So what we can do, let me go and line it up here. I don't know what's going on. Let me let me see there. Okay. So the two GUIs seem to be scaled correctly. Now you'll see that these GUIs don't line up simply even though we've gone and lined them up correctly. The reason for this is, is because they've got different anchor points. This one's anchor point is going up there. This one's anchor point is going down there, meaning they're not going to line up correctly. And that really depends on what your anchor point is. Now, what you could do, you could go and say, okay, well, let me actually go and change the text label here, anchor point to 0.5, uh, comma 0.5, just like that. And let me move that back. You could do that. But a very organized way to do that is to simply go and actually insert these labels inside of separate frames and control them from there. Usually what people tend to do, and you've probably seen it in a couple of my tutorials, is people tend to go and insert a frame and then insert all of their buttons, for example, along here. So there, all my buttons would be there. Or what they may even do, if you've got GUI all over the show, they may go and cover the entire screen with a GUI and set the background transparency with one and then control all the GUI through there and insert all of that into the frame. But that's not what we're doing here. Uh, let me go and delete this frame here for now. So we'll delete that. But what you could do is you can go and change these anchor points accordingly to make them work to how you would like. Again, it is just a matter of playing around and seeing what works best for your game. There you can see now, if we change the anchor point to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, it works great, it's lining up, etc. So. Now the same thing, let's say, okay, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna now and disable this screen GUI and we're gonna insert another screen GUI. We're gonna move on to where we actually go and use frames. Now, that was just your individual, your separate GUI scaling. We're gonna be inserting frames and now we're gonna be doing the exact same thing and I went and insert it in the wrong area. I meant to insert a screen GUI and then click on the plus button and insert a frame. So now what I'm gonna be doing is I'm firstly gonna be starting with a little bar here on the left. Now this is gonna be where all our little buttons are and you know, really whatever you want to be here, name tag, I don't know, text, whatever. This is gonna be our little background. This is gonna be our little area where all our buttons for the side of the game are gonna be held. So I'm gonna click on the plus button and insert a, we're gonna insert a image, let's go an image button because this for example can be icons. Let me go and put one here in the middle and then one here on the other side, just slightly lower so we can see where the end is there. So. We've now got the frame, we've got the buttons, all is done. We go and change the anchor point again, 
point, uh, 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5 just like that move it back simply because it is located in the middle of the screen it's taken up majority of the screen and 0 0.5 is i would say the best anchor point you could probably have in a gui anyway we've got our anchor point there etc it's all lined up with the um screen and whatnot there what we don't go do is then we then go and grab our frame and we grab everything everything inside of our frame so we go grab our frame shift and then click onto the last image button or the last item that is in your game or in your GUI. That could be a text label, it could be a text button, whatever. Whatever is the last one in your frame, you wanna go and select that. We then wanna head over to our unit conversion, scale on the size, and then also scale on the position. And then we wanna head over to our plugins. We wanna deselect all the other image buttons, click on the frame, go to our plugins, add constraint. And now that has added a UI aspect ratio constraint inside of our frame. Now, let's say we had to go and minimize our screen. You're able to see the scales accordingly. Now, this isn't the best demonstration simply because no one's screen is gonna be like so, I mean, so compact. No one's screen's gonna be like that. But an easy demonstration to see on how this actually works is we go to our test mode just up here and you can see Galaxy 3, whatever that is, iPhone XR, iPhone 14, it is all scaled to the left. Same thing here, iPad 2, who's walking around with an iPad 2? I don't even know, I've never even heard of an iPad 2. Um, same thing here, Samsung Tab, whatever that is. Um, you could really do a, another laptop. You can see it's all scaled correctly, no matter what device players are playing on. It's not over the screen, the buttons are not huba juba all together, it is all scaled nicely. And have you noticed, we did not put UI aspect ratio constraints inside of the image button, simply because it is inside of our frame and all our image buttons are being controlled by our frame. So our frame is being uh, controlled by the anchor point and also the ratio constraint as we mentioned there. So you don't want to go and put aspect, uh, you don't want to go and put uh, constraints inside of your image buttons, only inside of you for your main frame. Now let's say you wanted to go and a little bit of text here. Let's say you're doing maybe like a bit of a sale on your Game Pass shop, for example. We've now got a sale text there. There we go. That says sale. We're going to change it, change this to sale. There we go. There's a major sale on. Woohoo! Yay. Okay. There's a sale on there. You do the exact same thing. Scale, scale, and then now you don't even have to do anything else. You don't have to go and delete this one and whatnot. You just click the scale on the size and scale on the position, holding down your text label. Now we go and size the GUI down, you're able to see it scales with it. But as we remember, this uh, GUI, uh, sorry, the text is not scaled. So we wanna, again, go and enable our text scale. And now you're able to see it scales correctly. Same thing here, if we test it here on the Galaxy, Samsung, or whatever this is, sale. Same thing here, iPhone 6, sale. It's not all over the screen, it's not here, there, and everywhere. It's right underneath where we put it, exactly how we edit it inside of Studio. So that is your main bar right there. We're also gonna be going over, what I'll do, I'm gonna disable this frame right there. We're also gonna be going over, let's say, a Game Pass shop, because a lot of people you would like to use Game Pass shops, you know, and item shops, and teleporter GUIs, but they cannot get them scaled. Now, what tends to be the problem is, is it really comes down to how your GUI is created and how it has been scaled. So we've got our main GUI here. I'm not gonna go and make anything fancy. I mean, who cares about that? We've got our main GUI here. Go and customize it to how you want. Click on the plus button. I'm gonna insert, ooh, insert, let's insert. Mm, let's insert a, let's go text button. Let's insert a text button, oops. Let me go and change the color. I'm just gonna change it to a green so that we can see it. Or you can change the background transparency. Whatever you want. I'm gonna go and change this to Game Pass. Game Pass just like that. That is our Game Pass right there. I'm gonna go and text scaled just like that. There is our Game Pass button. I'm gonna duplicate this a couple times. Put that there, put that, there we go. That will do the trick. Go and duplicate that, duplicate that. It's not center, it, I really don't care what it looks like right now. But there you go, we've got a Game Pass GUI. You can add a little bit of a shop title here at the top. Let's add a little bit of a shop title. So now you can see we've got a shop name up there. We've got our Game Pass buttons. And if you want, add a little bit of an X button there. It's up to you. Anyway, we've got our shop GUI. All is well. Now all we do is exactly what we did with the other frame. We grab the frame. We grab everything inside of the frame. So we grab all of the text buttons and the text label included. Then we simply go up here, scale, scale on the size and also the position, scale, scale. Then we go and grab our main frame, plugins, add constraint, 
And now, when we go and move the GUI, it's going to be scaled all correctly. So if we go and move this just like that, you're able to see, oh, something we forgot to do, we didn't change the anchor point, and that is my mistake. When you're making a GUI in the center of the screen, the best thing is to do is have an anchor point of 0 0.05, uh, sorry, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, so that it is centered in the screen, exactly like we were mentioning before. So that was the only problem there, that's my mistake. But have an anchor point of 0 0.5, comma 0 0.5, Go and scale all of, the, all of these with the scale and the position and then add a constraint just into the frame not into all the text buttons and the text labels just into the frame so now if we go and test out on our um, iphone 6 you're able to see it is all scaled correctly same thing with our iphone 4s our amazing top-notch iphone 4s iphone xr all scaled correctly so there you have it. There you can see that the main Game Pass shop has now been scaled and it is scaled, scaled accordingly. Instead of having to go to your test bar every single time to go and test out to see if it's actually scaled, just drag the little sidebar here, left and right, and you'll be able to see, okay, it is scaled, it's going to the center. If it's not scaled, it's going to collide with your little um, properties and explorer and all this other tab here. It's not going to scale down how it is, and it's just going to be blurring all over the show. And just to add on to this Game Pass GUI here, it really depends on what you want your GUI to look like, but let's say you suddenly wanted, oh, okay, this Game Pass is gonna be having a sale, exactly like we did in the previous GUI. That's having a sale, we need a sale text there. Okay, we go and do this, background color, there we go, and we change the text to sale, exactly what we did before. We go and scale the text in the properties, in the text scaled, where's that gone? There we go, text scale, there is our sale. Uh, we're going to change the text color to maybe let's say, I don't know, uh, maybe a white would look good. There we go. We've got a sale. Wow, so cool. There we go. Scale, scale in the unit conversion. And then just like that, it is also scaled correctly. And it's really easy as that. If you want to add some images, if you want to add some other random buttons, you could. All you have to do is make sure that your frame has got a unit uh, UI aspect ratio constraint and that you've done it or you've done the unit conversion on all frames or buttons or text labels. And then really that's it. That's all you need to do. And then you've got fully scaled GUI working correctly. Now, obviously, as I have mentioned before, every single person who works with GUI does it differently. A lot of people like to go and, as I've mentioned earlier, a lot of people like to actually go and insert a frame over the entire screen and then work from there. So for example, what I mean by this is they insert that there, they set the anchor point to uh, 0 0.5, um, comma 0.5, just like that. They set the anchor point, they move it back, then they change the background transparency, they then go and size up this GUI and we add a constraint just like that. And then we head over here, click on the plus button, frame. Let's go and insert a couple of buttons here. There we go, uh, image button, just like that. There we go, we're gonna have one button on this GUI. And then we, uh, keep in mind, you can also change this GUI background transparency, it doesn't matter, it's up to you. But there we go, we've got our GUI there, etc., etc. And now it is inside of the frame that is taking up the entire screen. Anchor point is 0.5. Now, because you've got a frame that is holding your other GUI, you do not need to go and change that anchor point. So if you guys remember, this GUI that we just went and added here that we made transparent, we changed that um, anchor point to 0.5.5. But now with this GUI here, you do not need to do that. Simply because this frame right here, your background frame, is what is going to be controlling all of this GUI. So there we have it. So we've got a, a, um, a UI aspect ratio, whatever, whatever, inside of our frame, our main frame, our background frame. We've got our frame here that's holding our image button, multiple buttons, whatever. We then want to go and hold down on our frame and our image button and then scale on the size and scale on the position. And then in our frame, we go and add a UI, const uh, uh, add a constraint. And there you can see now our UI scales accordingly. Now what you could do, and this is why people like it, is because people could have the exact same thing here on the other side and it works the exact same. So if we had to go and scale that down, you're able to see it scales with it. Same thing here, let's uh, do a device, you're able to see these two GUIs scale together, they scale correctly. But as we have mentioned, 
Sometimes it does scale down a little bit too far, and that's why some people like to keep the GUI separate for that specific side. So for example, they would have a left-hand side GUI, a right-hand uh, right side GUI, a top GUI, a bottom GUI. This is the exact same thing uh, you can also do inside of like a, uh, a Game Pass frame. You have your main frame here, you've got your frame there, and you just obviously remove the anchor point, and then it will scale accordingly. But there again, it varies on what you're wanting. Anyway, so I think that's about it for the main just standard GUI, you know, your buttons, your frames, etc. We're going to move on to scrolling frames. Now, scrolling frames is not my best friend. Let's, I'm just going to openly admit that. But thankfully, thanks to Barry, I've been able to get my head around scrolling frames. And it is actually surprisingly easy. Now, it does take a little bit of customization and a little bit of time and effort to make it work to your preference. But just to inform you, scrolling frames do not work the same as regular frames like our Game Pass shop. Scrolling frames work in a different way. So I'm gonna go and close these screen GUIs here, click on the plus button, another screen GUI. I'm, I'm not going really in too much detail here on clicking this and adjust this and do this and that. I'm just kind of going with the flow and then you can kind of watch what I'm doing and then scale your GUI for yourself. So instead of frame, this is going to be our main frame, which is covering up the entire screen. And now you do not want to add anything else inside of your scrolling frame frame situation here inside of that GUI if you are keeping it separate. Anyway, so for example, this could be maybe a Game Pass GUI. Have it as a separate screen GUI. That is my suggestion. Anyway. Uh, we're going to set the anchor point to 0.5, comma 0.5, like we had it just before, because that's going to go to the middle. We are then going to go and change the background transparency to 1. And now already, straight away, just so I don't go and accidentally forget it, I'm just going to go and scale, scale, these uh, scale on the size, scale on the position, but I'm not going to add the UI constraint just yet. We will do that all together here soon. So I'm just, just so I don't forget it, I'm just going to scale those just like we have there. Click on the plus button, and now I'm going to insert another frame, and this is going to be our main frame. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be making a Game Pass GUI, which is just going to be something that a player can open here on the side of the screen, and then a the GUI is going to open. Anyway, we can go and leave the anchor point at uh, zero because we, we, uh, this frame right here is controlling our GUI, so we do not need to go and adjust this um, anchor point. So. We go click on the plus button and now this is really your i guess you could say your decoration gui this is your gui where you can put, go put your x button go put your nice title go add your images really whatever you would like to do i highly don't recommend you add um should we say additional things inside of a scrolling frame just have your scrolling frame dedicated just to those buttons which are going to be prompting whatever for example in this circumstance it's going to be prompting a game pass don't add text labels and images and all of this hubba jubba inside of your text frame insert insert it inside of your main frame here don't go and put just your scrolling frame within your title on the top of the scrolling frame it's going to be a mess it's going to be difficult to get right so this is just going to be your main frame where you can go add a title you can add some stickers here or whatever you want Anyway, so we've got that there, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to grab these three items here, scale, scale, just so that it's already done and we don't have to do it later. Because when you're creating a scrolling frame or a big GUI, you sometimes forget to do these things, and it's kind of key, or I guess you could say important, or ideal to keep on top of it when you're creating your GUI. Anyway, we've got our main thing there, and we haven't added any constraints just yet. So inside of our frame, I'm going to insert a scrolling frame. So I'm going to search up scrolling frame there because it is not often used. People don't often use it. It's not used in every single game, but it is there. So you just want to go and search up your scrolling frame in the bar. And now we want to expand our scrolling frame. Just for this tutorial, I'm going to be setting the background transparency to, uh, sorry, the background color to blue, just so that we can easily see where our scrolling frame actually really is. I'm going to line up, line it up here with the center of the GUI, and there we have it. It's, it is in the center of the GUI. Obviously, it really doesn't look very good, but I mean, it's, it does the job for now. For the demonstration, you go and create your GUI to your preference. Anyway, we've got our main scrolling frame here now. Now, what we want to do is we want to insert a frame. Well, multiple frames actually, because the frame is going to be what is holding your image button, your text, whatever. Basically, it's going to be like a, a scrolling frame, a frame inside of a scrolling frame, inside of a frame, inside of a frame. 
That is basically how it is working. So this frame here is going to be holding your button or your text or whatever you would want on your scrolling frame so that it is not like randomly based and randomly positioned around your scrolling frame. It's inside of this particular GUI. Now you don't want to go and adjust this here yet. All we're going to be doing is adding these uh, frames inside of the scrolling frame. So I'm going to be using four um, frames inside of the scrolling frame. I'm then gonna click on the plus button next to our scrolling frame and insert a UI grid layout. So now that you've inserted the UI grid layout, you can see it's kind of laid out in a four little, I guess you could say it's laid out as a four. Now obviously you can go and change how, where you want your GUIs positioned, etc. And keep in mind, these are gonna be your GUIs that the player is going to be clicking or what, or sorry, should I be saying the text buttons are gonna be included in. So what we're gonna be working on first before you go and adjust your GUI is we're gonna get it scale. That's what we're gonna be focusing on. So go to your UI grid layout and now we wanna to go to cell padding and also cell size. And we wanna expand the X and Y and X and Y right here. Now what we wanna do is we wanna go and change the offset, remove all the offsets and change it to zero every single one of them on the padding as well as the size. Go and change the offsets to zero. Now what you wanna do, you wanna head over to your X. We're gonna be adjusting our X. Now with the cell padding, we'll start with cell padding. Basically what the cell padding X axis is basically doing is it, it's determining the gap between each frame. So for example, our gap between each frame, it, it's obviously our frames have disappeared because there's nothing there now. But what, for example, the, uh, um, what we would be doing is our, in our X, sorry, in our, uh, in our scale, if I'm correct, yes, sorry, sorry, yes. Our scale, in our scale, we're gonna be changing the, uh, this to, we'll go to 0, 0.0, should we do 0, point, 0 0.01 I think would work well. So that is our gap. We then want to go to our Y. You can still see there's nothing there. Yep, I understand that. But then I'm going to go to our uh, scale here. And this is going to be a basically the gap between the frames lower than the others. What the padding basically is, is the gaps between each GUI. The size is basically adjusting the size of the GUI. So right now you're able to see there's nothing showing. We can't really get a gist of what's going on but we're just gonna be starting with the padding and make our way down to the cell size. So I'm gonna change this to, let's go to 0.005. For now, go and put these digits in, just so that when uh, we do go and size of our GUI, we're all on the same page, we're all in the same position. Anyway, cell size, we move down to the cell size, we change the scale of our cell size. We will go, uh, let's do, I find the scale of a cell size is best at, let's say, I'm gonna write down 0.4 for now. We're going to put down 0.4. That, that's basically identifying the size of the frame on the X axis. But now we need to go and adjust the Y axis, which is gonna create our frame. And then for the Y axis, I'm gonna go and change the scale to, let's go, let's go with 0.15. And now you can see that basically creates our four little areas here. So now you can see, obviously, we've got our GUIs and it looks a little bit different compared to before. Now, depending on, or depending on how you want your buttons to be, will vary. So remember up here, what we're what we adjusting here on the padding is the gap between each area. So let's say we did this to 0 0.5. It makes the middle gap larger, where with the X, it uh, sorry, with the Y, it then goes and let's say we made this 0 0.01, you're able to see it goes and makes this gap larger. larger. So it, this one adjusts the middle, this one adjusts the one between the part, uh, the uh, frames below it. And that basically adjusts the padding or the gaps between each of the GUI. So you can see I've currently got it at a cell padding of 0.01 and 0.005, so half of the X um, scale. And that basically gives it that nice little equal flush look. Anyway, so now let's say you're wanting to change the size of your frames. You go down here to the cell size, we go to our scale, and let's say we had to go and make this zero point, let's go with 0 0.5. Let's go 0 0.5. Now you can see with 0 0.5, remember this is very small digits. We're working with less than one here. So we're working with point decimal, decimal points, meaning it is very small. We're not wanting to put a scale of 100 in there. That's gonna be no good. We're gonna be wanting to work with the digits or with the decimal digits. Anyway, so we got 0 0.45, and you can see that kind of expanded the, um, the frames over on the X axis. And this basically enlarged them 
making it so it reaches the other end of the uh, GUI. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust this to make it kind of go nearly flush with our little scrolling frame there. So let me go 0.45, let me change this to 0.7. Let's try 5, 0.75. You can see, okay, there we go, it's pretty much equal now. You can see our button is pretty much right next to our scrolling frame. So, uh, sorry, our um, uh, frames are right next to our scrolling frame. Same thing here now. We've got it flush to the side. Again, it really depends on what your GUI is. You go and adjust it to how you would like. Same with the unit conversion. If we go down here to the cell size again, with the, I think it was the, um, the, uh, the scale on the Y, what we can go do is we can go and change this to a larger number. Let's go and change this to 0.2. You're able to see now it adjusts the Y value, it adjusts the Y length of that frame. If we had to go and change this to 0.001, you're able to see it is very, very small. And if we change this to 0 0.0, uh, let's go 0 0.05. You, oh, actually, hold on, sorry, 0 0.05, not 0 0.005. 0.5, you can see it is a much larger, uh, smaller frame. So I feel 1.5 is a okay size, but there again, it really depends on how you're wanting. Now, what will happen is, let's say you go and make your size of your, um, what would you even call this? Your size, your X size of the frames smaller, because let's say you wanted three little areas here on the top, you just go and change this accordingly. So let's go and change that to 0 0.175. You can see now, now we've got all four up here, but that's not exactly what we want. Let's go and change this to 0 0.275. There we go. We have now got it at 0 0.275. Let's go and see if 0 0.95. Let's go 0 0.310. Let's see that work. There we go. Now you can see we've lined up the three here on the top. And obviously, it, basically all it is, it is laying it out in a grid layout. Hence why we've got a UI grid layout installed inside of our scrolling frame. So there you go, you've got the gist of the GUI and that is basically gone and created the GUI inside of our scrolling frame. So now what we wanna do, we now, obviously you go and customize it to how you want, but the GUI has not been fully scaled. You can see if we go try and move it around, it is a big mess. So what I'm gonna go do now is I'm now gonna, we, as we remember, we did a unit conversion on the this frame here, on that frame as well, but we didn't do on the scrolling frame. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab every single thing inside of the scrolling frame. And actually what I'm gonna do before we do that, I'm gonna go and insert a, let's go and insert a image, let's do an image button inside of this one right here, just to show you that it does actually scale. So I'm gonna go and grab everything. You wanna go grab absolutely everything that is inside of your scrolling frame, except those other two. We don't wanna grab those because those are already scaled. So what we do, we go to our scrolling frame, we grab everything inside of our frame, including the UI grid layout, the frame, the image button, everything. We then go and click scale on size, scale on position. And then we go and click on our frame. We then go and add constraint, insert on the other frame, add constraint. And then on our scrolling frame, we wanna also go and add a constraint. So now that is all the constraints that we need to add, only in the background frame, in the main shop, decorative shop frame, and also in the scrolling frame. Nothing into any of the frames, nothing into the UI grid layout, absolutely nothing. So now if we go have to go and move this and scale this down, you are able to see our scrolling frame scales correctly. Same thing with the X button, it scales correctly. Same thing with every single thing inside of our scrolling frame is all scaled correctly. Same thing if we go on to a, for example, let's say Galaxy, whatever this is, you have to see it's all scaled correctly. It doesn't look the most appealing because it is a very horrible looking GUI. iPhone 5, whoa, 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 look, it's scaled correctly. Same thing there, tablet, whatever this is, it's scaled correctly. Let's say iPhone 14 Pro, it's scaled correctly and players can move around accordingly depending on how they want their GUI to be laid out. Now the exact same thing as we mentioned on the previous GUIs. Let's say we wanted to add something inside of, let's say this frame right here, and we had a sale going on, okay? We got another sale, yay, 50% off, whatever. Okay, now I've gone and lost my GUI. Let me size that up there, there we go. We go and size that accordingly. There we go, job done. We go and make it a little bit smaller. We've got a nice 50% sale, excellent. Change background uh, color. We'll do, go and do a red sale color. Yeah, so cool. Uh, oops, he's uh, sale. Sale on now, woohoo. Now what we do is we've got the sale GUI there. Let's go and uh, match it up accordingly. So that's on sale. 
Now, if we had to go and scale it down, you're able to see this GUI is gonna overlap and make a big mess inside of the scrolling frame. That's not what we want. Exactly as we mentioned with the previous GUIs, you go and grab your, your new frame or your new item that's inside of your frames, scale, scale, and then if we go and try it now, you're able to see it scales all correctly, no matter what. But obviously there again, something also to keep in mind is make sure to scale your text using text scaled. And there you can see now, if we go uh, minimize the screen down, we're able to see the GUI is scaled all correctly. But anyway, guys, I'm gonna wrap up the video here. If you do have any questions and you're needing a little bit of assistance with scaling your GUI and you, and you know, you're a little bit confused still, please feel free to reach out to us on Discord and we can happily help you out. But anyway, guys, I'm gonna wrap up the video here. If you guys did enjoy, I'd appreciate it if you do consider subscribing to the channel, turning on the notification bell, and also to consider liking the video, I'd really appreciate it. But anyway, have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see everyone in the next Roblox Studio video.